To get started with this tutorial, we're going to go to www.tinkercad.com and once there, you'll be greeted with this home page. Now, of course, if you don't have an account, you'll do join now up top and fill out the information it asks, and then you'll be greeted with the dashboard. Of course, we already have an account, so we're going to go ahead and just sign in. And once we click these few buttons, we'll be greeted with the Tinkercad dashboard seen here. Of course, you can see all of the models that the Cave Museum is working on. Yours will not have any of this as it is a new account. But the same thing will happen where we'll create a new design up here in the top left. So if I click on this, it'll take us to our workspace where we'll find all the tools needed to create the Minecraft bed. Once we get to our workspace here, you'll be greeted with three different things. The work plane, which is where we'll be doing all of our 3D modeling. It has a grid that helps us organize and align things. Our shapes menu over here on the right, the shapes being the building blocks of Tinkercad. These are what we're building our objects out of. And then finally, our toolbar at the top here. The tools will be going over all throughout this tutorial, as well as just showing off some of the shapes, although we're just going to be using the box for this Minecraft bed that we're making. Now, an important thing to remember when you're 3D modeling is that it's always good to have a reference image or something you can look at to help guide you in your 3D modeling. In this case, we were making something that's already around. It's a Minecraft bed. If you were making something completely new, an idea that you had, you would have sketches of it or something you can reference later. Now I went ahead and looked up Minecraft bed in Google and I found this image. So you can see I already know the different pieces that I'm gonna be putting together. For example, it looks like it's two major components, a bed frame, and then the bed. So the first thing I want to do is make the bed frame. So let's go back to our Tinkercad and we're going to get started on that. We're going to go over here and we're going to grab this box. So to do that we're going to click on this box and we're going to drag it out while still holding down the left mouse button. You can see there's a little ghost to where it'll be. When I let go of the mouse button you see our box appears in our work plane. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the shape of this box so that it matches this flat bed frame here on our bed. So to do that, we can use these little buttons, these little squares all around the box to change the dimensions. So in this case, you can change the width and the length here, but I wanna change the height first. So I'm gonna click on this box and you see how it says 20 here. If I click on this box and I drag down, so I'll hold the left mouse button and drag down, it changes how tall this box is. I want it to be about one, and this is in millimeters, so that's one millimeter. And our frame right here is very long, so we're going to change it so it's very short, but very long. So we're going to grab this black box right here, we're going to drag it out to the right until it goes to about 40, right there. Now we have the base. Now we're going to be designing this frame a little funny. We're going to be designing it upside down, and you'll see why in a second. So that means that these legs will be pointing up. So let's go back and let's go make our first leg. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna drag another box out, click and drag, and we're gonna change the dimensions of this box to where it's five by five. So to do that, I can click on this side and change the length to five by dragging in. And then I can click on this box to change the width to five. Like that. And then I'm going to change the height to 5 as well, so I'm going to click on this top box here, change this number from 20 to 5. Just like that. And now you notice everything's getting kind of cluttered in here, right? It's getting kind of hard to click on each one. So we can rectify that by zooming in. So if I use the scroll wheel or the mouse wheel and push the wheel forward, I can zoom in the camera. And in doing that, I zoom into this box, but this one kind of shuttered away over here. So I'm going to move this over. So if I click on this box, so I'm not clicking on any of the boxes, just on the box itself, clicking and dragging, I can move wherever I want it. So now I have this box sitting up here and this box right here. And I need to get this foot, which is what it'll end up being, into a corner right here, just like it is on our bed. So to do that, I can click and drag it over. The problem is, is it might not be the best. It's not as easy as it could be. And there's a tool that can help us fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to select both this small box and this long flat one at the same time. 
and use what's called the align tool. So to do that, I'm going to click over here, just where there's nothing over here, nothing selected, just on the work plane. I'm going to click, I'm going to hold down the mouse button, and I'm going to drag up. And do you see this red box that's created? Now that red box is called the bounding box. Anything inside that box, when I let go of the left mouse button, will be selected. So when I let go of the left mouse button, you can see both items are selected. You can see how it says shapes two up here. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead up here to the align tool, or L on the keyboard. When I do that, these little black circles appear around our two objects. I want to make it so that this edge right here on the small box is the same as this edge on that side. And to do that, I would select this box right here. You see how there's a little ghost of what the box looks like. Now if I click on that, this box jumps down so that this side is now flush, or the same, it's aligned. But I also want this side over here that we can't see, and this side aligned in the same direction as well. So to do that, I would select this here. And now you can see this is perfectly aligned in this corner, so this corner is matched with that corner. And I have one leg of the bed. So we're going to do the same thing except with this side. We're going to click, drag this box down. We're going to change the dimensions here to 5 and 5. And you notice I can select on these white corners right here to show both the width and the length. So, And you can also click on the numbers themselves and change them there. So I'm going to type 5 on the keyboard. And you see it gives it a second and it'll bump, bump together. And I'm going to click 5 over here. And this time I'm going to press enter to make it change immediately. Now you can see it jumped off into a corner. I'm just going to drag it over. And then we also need to change the height. Let's change the height from 20 to 5. So I type 5 on the keyboard. And there we go. Now I could make it so that this would align with the corner again. But the problem is, is that this one right here would also jump into the corner. So we're going to just manually place it in that corner. And to do that, I'm going to have a bit of a difficulty because I can't see for sure if this is aligned with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the camera. And I can rotate the camera by clicking anywhere that isn't a shape and holding down the right mouse button. So I'm clicking with the right mouse button and I'm moving the mouse. And when I move the mouse, you can see it moves the camera around. Now I can see if this side right here is flush, which it looks like it is, or if this side is flush, which would look like it isn't. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this over just one. There we go. So now we can see this side is flush and this side is flush. All right, and then we're just going to move the camera back to where it was, holding the right mouse button and dragging. And now we have two legs of our bed. But notice our frame is red, where this one's brown. So let's change the color. So we're going to select everything. So we're going to left click drag and create that bounding box to select all three objects. You can see shapes three. Change this red solid to brown solid right here. Now you can see the object is brown colored. And what we need to do is we need to create two more legs just on the other side. So the problem is, is that I don't want to keep dragging this box down, changing its dimensions, and changing the color. When I have two perfectly good feet right here, then I can just move over to this side. And I can do that with what's called Duplicate and Repeat tool. To do that, though, I need to select both objects at once because I don't want to just do it uh, individually. I want to make sure that I'm saving time and doing them together. But to do that, I need to select both these objects at the same time, but I don't want to select this big one down here. So if I did the bounding box trick where I clicked and dragged, it would select this one even if it's not all in the bounding box. You just need some of it in there. So we're going to do an alternative way of selecting multiple objects. What we're going to do is we're going to hold shift on the keyboard and then we're going to click on the objects that we want to select. So you can see by holding shift, I'm allowed to select two objects at the same time. You can see it says shapes two up here, but it does not select an object I didn't click on, which is this right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit the duplicate and repeat tool. When I click that, it looks like nothing happens. But what really happened is that it duplicated them and put them exactly where they were. So now I have two objects inside of each other. So if I just click on this and drag it out, you can see there are actually two of them in there. So I'm just going to drag these over to the other side, and I'm going to make sure that it says negative 35, because I'm moving the negative 35 millimeters to the left, but I'm not moving it horizontally, so I'm not moving it up or down. So we don't want it to say 
something like this where there's a number on the top one. We want the bottom one here to be 35. All right, so if we just take a quick look around, we can see that this corner is flush, these two sides are even, and these two sides are even. Make sure to double check that they are. If not, move them around. All right, and now we have our frame. But the problem is our frame is upside down. You can bear it here, the legs need to be on the bottom with the gap there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a tool called the mirror tool. So I need to select all the objects. So I'm gonna create this bounding box or you can hold shift and click each object individually. And then I'm gonna go up here to the top right to the mirror tool, so right next to the align tool. Click on that and you'll see these little black double-headed arrows show up. So if I wanted to mirror this to where this side is instead on this side, I could click on this arrow right here. But since they're two of the exact same sides, it changes nothing. It's the same with this one. This one changes the bottom ones and the top ones. But I don't need to do that because they're the exact same. I do, however, need to flip it so that this, top, this bottom part becomes the top. To do that, I would select this one right here. You can see that little ghost that appears. If I click that, it flips back up. And now we have a bed frame that looks correct. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna make it so that I can move this as one object because right now, if I click on this and I drag it, it just drags the top part. We don't want that. So if that happens, I can always come up here and do the undo button. So I can undo my last action. I can also undo the mirror I just did and I can go as far back as I want. And if you ever undo an action accidentally, you can go up here to the redo and reverse the undo. All right, so we want to group these items together, combine them so that they're one object. So I'm going to select all of them at once, the bounding box, shapes five, which is the number we should have, and then go here to group. And now you can see it all turns into one object. And no matter where I click, I can move the object as if it was one, because it is. So now let's go back to our reference image. We need to add the bed part right here, the red part. Let's do that one first. So we're going to grab, you guessed it, a box. And we're going to change the dimensions on this box. We're going to change the height to 5. Enter. We're going to change the length to 30. And then what we have to do is we have to get this bed on top of the frame. So right now they're both sitting on the ground. To do that, if we click on our bed and go to this cone right here, we can click and drag this cone upwards where it says five. Let's kind of zoom out a little bit so we can see it. So see how it says five right here. So it's five millimeters above the work plane. Now what we can do is we can drag this bed on top of our frame. And you can just take a look around. So let's just move the camera, rotate it. So it's flush on this side, flush on this side, and flush on this side. So it's nice and aligned. All right, so we have this red part. Let's add the white part where the sheets and the pillow are. So to do that, we're going to grab our final box. We're going to change its height to 5. And we're going to change its width to 10. And we could have changed the length right here to 10. But I want to show you another feature real quick before we finish up. And it's the rotate. So right here, I can rotate this box 22.5 degree increments like this. So I want to rotate it 90 degrees. Or if you want to rotate it more precisely, see how my mouse is inside this little cogwheel that appears? If I bring my mouse outside of it, I can do it in point increments. I can also manually change it right here by clicking on the number and typing the number I want, which is negative 90. Just like that. We're going to change the height of this box. We're going to drag it up 5 millimeters, just like that. So 5 millimeters off the work plane. We're going to change the color from red to white. I'm going to rotate the view. And then we're going to move this over here so that it's flush in this corner and on this corner. And these two are not inside each other. So now we have our Minecraft bed. But again, what if I want to move this bed? I'm left with individual pieces. So if I undo that twice, I'm going to have to select everything and group it so I can move it as one. But watch what happens when I hit the group button. It all turns into a brown block. Now this is because when you combine something, it adopts the color of the largest item in there. In that case, it was the, fr uh, the frame. So what we need to do is we need to enable the multicolor tool. 
So we go up here to solid, click on that, and down here it says multicolor. So if we click on that, it shows all the colors in this group that we made. So now it's still a solid object, but all the colors remain that we gave it. And now we have a complete bed that we can move around as we want. Now it's important that you want to organize your, your models and your tinkerings. So you go up here and you see how it says Neat Snicket Jofo? Tinkercad likes to create these nonsense names, but we're going to change it. So I'm just going to click on here and I'm going to type in Minecraft Bed, just like that. And now we have a Minecraft bed that we've made using the box in Tinkercad. One feature I could not touch on while making the Minecraft bed is the whole feature. If we were to come up here to the top, we would see that we have a box and cylinder that are shaded differently than the box and cylinder below. That is because they're shaded whole. So if I were to grab this box and pull it out, you can see that one, it's transparent, and two, it has these stripes on them. That indicates that it's shaded whole up here rather than solid. If I wanted to switch it, I would just click solid. If I switch it back, I can just select whole. What this means is, is if I were to group this box with our bed, like so, it cuts wherever that box touched. It's really useful for creating complex objects that are not in the shapes menu over here, as well as providing some more advanced features with creating complex objects first and then turning those into a hole. So if I were to switch our bed from a multicolor solid to a hole, switch this back to a solid, I could use this bed to cut out this shape inside the box, which we will do now. And there we are. It opens up a whole realm of possibilities with Tinkercad and does take some experimentation to get right, but once you do, you can create some really unique objects.